So now, now for this season, I mean, like uh, going through, you know, like, like, are there favorite episodes, ones that you're really looking forward for people to see? Besides, we talked about Dynamite and we talked about, um, you know, Brian Pillman. Well, I think from my from a personal standpoint, um, I'm I'm really uh, I mean, I, I always love the deep cut episodes. I always love the ones that and I think the real hardcore fans do, too. You know, the ones where they haven't been told, they haven't been looked into, you know, the kind of Gino Hernandez's or the, you know, the, that the was, good, that, that, that was yeah. a really interesting episode. That's another one. Gino was a guy that like the modern fans really don't know Gino. And no. a lot of people like all of a sudden saw, oh, my God, who is this guy and everything like that. And it's like, oh, yeah, he was he was like a big star, but he like disappeared in the you know, he died yeah. in the mid in the mid 80s as a young man when he died. Yeah. And and he was really mostly known in Houston, Texas. You know, he was not, you know, I mean, he worked in Madison Square Garden. And he worked in George on George Championship Wrestling. But really, he was a Houston guy and, you know, and, and Dallas to an, to an extent. But but yeah, on a, on a national basis, he was an amazing talent that people, you know, thought that they've seen everyone and hadn't seen, you know, him. Because, I mean, I've told guys, you know, um, in, in both MMA and pro wrestling, you know, when they're like looking up their superstar Billy Graham interviews and, and Jesse right. Ventura interviews. And I always go like, right. I don't know how much exists, but look up Gino Hernandez, you know, because he's right. and they'll go like, who's Gino Hernandez? And I go, look up Gino Hernandez. Yeah. Well, not to not to break kayfabe, but, you know, I also, you know, you you gave me the up and up that, you know, MJF was, you know, responded to Gino's heel promos. And I think that's, right. you know, you know, I don't want to ruin, you know, I don't want to <laughs> spoil that. But, you know, that was great. You know, awesome. And um, but anyway, yeah. Deep cut stories, um, man. Uh, this season, I'm really excited for people to see Bruiser Bedlam. Uh, Johnny Kane. Oh, yeah. What a crazy yeah. guy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just like, you know, and that and that was a Jim Cornette uh, uh, special request um, okay. where he was just like, I just please get to the bottom of this, because it's one of those stories where the guy they all knew in the locker room was this teddy bear. Uh, you know, for those who don't <laughs> for those who don't know, you know, Johnny K-9, it was a was a jobber in the WWF in the late 80s, early 90s, regional to Canada, that area to Ontario area. And then he basically had a notable run for about a year in Smoky Mountain Wrestling as Cornette's top heel, you know, at the time and for about a year. Um, and so his reputation among the boys was just like, oh, he's just this kind of eccentric but teddy bear guy. Like, you know, he's an odd really duck, liked you know? him. Everyone liked him. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's driving down from Ontario to Tennessee, you know, in the middle of the winter in a Jeep with no shirt on. Okay. <laughs> you know, he's that kind of a guy, um, but, but lovable, you know? And then of course, you know, once his run fades out and he kind of fades out from wrestling, you start reading in the papers that, Oh, he's implicated in the bombing of a police station. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 and a famous murder. Yeah, and like a double, yeah, and like a double, a double, uh, a double homicide, uh, also in Ontario, of of a uh, prosecutor and her husband, <laughs> and you know he's implicated in that. It's never proven, but he uh, and and then you later learn that he was the chapter president of the Satan's Choice <laughs> Motorcycle Club, like a serious, a f serious mo biker gang up there. Um, so this episode is just really interesting because you're really just diving into not only just the story of a jobber kind of, but like here's this guy living two completely different lives that, you know, the wrestling side has no idea about. And then of course the biker gang side doesn't really know much about like, Oh, he's a wrestler or whatever, you know? So it's, it's really interesting. And then we were able to interview his ex-wife, um, Tracy, who was there for all of this and her interview just leaps off the screen. She's such a character and she's so awesome. And, um, and, and just, yeah, it's just amazing talking about SWAT teams breaking down her door and, you know, and talking about, you know, like Johnny getting involved in selling drugs and spraying a hundred pounds of weed with Coke, uh, like, you know, like with like Coca-Cola and, uh, you know, to make it way more. And it's just a bizarre, amazing Canadian folktale of <laughs> this, 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 this biker who lived a wild, crazy life. And, and also it's cool to hear from like Jericho and Lance Storm is incredible in it. Um, and, 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 and they both, you know, they, they crashed with this guy, like, like, like Johnny Canine would Can stay you imagine like Lance Storm no. and Johnny Canine? I mean, it's like it's you know? crazy. I mean, it's funny because like I knew of Johnny Canine. I don't think I ever met him, but I knew of him from, you know, when he was in Smoky Mountain and everything. And then the first time, like, I guess it made the papers 
that, you know, something happened. And I, I knew that he had like a sort of shady thing, you know, like might have been involved in drug dealing. I mean, I yeah. kind of knew that. But but I just remember there was something that made the papers. It might have been the the, 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 the the murder case where he was implicated or whatever. So I right. remember calling up the local police in um, some somewhere in Ontario and the, the like the guy who answers and goes canine and he goes like. You, you know, just the way he said it, it was like every police officer, like in, he was like, you realize every police officer in Canada knows canine. It's like, they, it's oh, like, he's like, he's yeah. like the, the, the head of the most wanted list type of yeah. guy. And I just thought he was like, you know, just some ex wrestler who was dealing drugs. I didn't realize it was like, no. like, like, like the, the head, like, you know, like not the head, but the muscle guy of the head guy of the, you know, biggest, whatever mob scene in the whole country. It seemed like, yeah. 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 It was just, it was, it's just a wild, it's a great, it's a, it's a great story. And, you know, and, and it's just, yeah, those are the stories that like, you know, really, really excite me. The ones that like, you don't know very much going in and then you find, holy shit, this is a whole freaking world in itself. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.